Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Mazzori here. It's Thursday, the 1st of February, 2024, with your end of week market snapshot. Clients will get this link to an email tomorrow morning. It'll be Friday's message, either tomorrow or over the weekend. As usual, I'll come back with an economic update. So for this morning, I wanted to start with this morning's written note. And I just want to emphasize a point I made in that note. Now, you no doubt notice that there was quite the sell-off yesterday in stocks. Worst day since, oh, September or October of last year. And just to touch base on that, you know, we've been talking about the quarterly refunding announcement that came this week. And that if the Treasury gave the same anticipation in terms of where on the curve they would issue the debt to finance the government for the current quarter, meaning the short end, that would be very bullish for stocks. Now, Monday, they announced less anticipated. That was bullish. But yesterday's two and five year notes, uh, more so than bills, from what I understand, was kind of a surprise. It didn't really move the needle, as I said here. Um, the S&P and the NASDAQ, they were already noticeably down. Not to the extent where they closed yesterday, but they were down in a noticeable amount. And that was from you know, disappointing news from the tech space. So they certainly weren't rescued by the QRA announcement, but I didn't see anything really meaningful in terms of the reaction. Then New York Community Bank Corp announced a huge surprise loss and a charge off they had to take uh, related to two big commercial real estate loans. So, you know, commercial real estate, of course, is on everybody's radar. Um, some people would tell you it's akin to the 2008 you know, U.S. mortgage security mess. I don't think that's the case. Um, you know, you, typically you don't get knocked out by the punch you see coming. Not to underplay that, not that there aren't going to be uh, incrementally more bad news that comes from that and that there's not some serious systemic risk there but doesn't look to us like you know we have a 2008 style you know mortgage backed security type situation just yet but we'll pay very close attention to it and uh, tell you what we think along the way um, that did spook equities and it of course kept a bit under bonds meaning bonds got bought yields came down then came the Fed and very interesting. This one's tough to gauge because I think I intimated earlier in the week that, you know, if last press conference was any indication, the Fed's going to give the market what it wants. And I tell you, from one meeting or one speech to the next, it's, it's tough, right? I can only imagine what short-term traders must be going through because he was hawkish. Uh, and, you know, the market has been begging for a March rate cut. And he basically just said, that's not coming. We think that odds favor the Fed having to cut aggressively, perhaps later in the year. But at the same time, and this is what I want to get to, and I can just kind of skip ahead. There's this conundrum. Okay. So I talk about the fact that, um, you yeah, know, well, let me go back here. So just for fun, yesterday I had the minute chart up uh, with the S&P 500 as Powell was speaking. And no doubt about it, the gyrations uh, confirmed our view that bad news, which in theory, which ultimately will inspire the start of the next rate cutting cycle, is good news. So any hint that things are indeed slowing, you can see the market rally on that. But any hint that the economy was resilient, was met with selling, Ultimately, it was him answering the question about March, basically saying, do not count on it. And that was it. That was all she wrote. Market rolled over pretty hard. Now, the irony that is clearly lost on today's investor who either hasn't really been through any cycles in the past, who has and they just, I guess, suffer from amnesia. You know, we are all subject to our own predilections or, or biases or whatever, instincts, history, what have you, or actually who believes that this time will be different and it's always going to be different till it isn't, is that weaker data that they are clearly yearning for is, alas, on the glide path from here to recession. I called it, you know, soft landing valley, aside from some big crack, you know, some big systemic crack that nobody sees coming. If you're going to end up in recession, you're going to go right through 
the soft landing narrative on the way there. So the fact that you know inflation's coming down, but the economy is slowing at the same time, that's all part and parcel to the path from here to recession. And as I've shown you, you know, ad nauseum, recession is going to be really bad for stocks at these values. Now, having said all that, we are entirely unsympathetic to the notion that this time might be different, and but maybe for different reasons. Here's our reasoning. The powers that be have set a precedent that absolutely and justifiably has consumers believing that the government will not only be there to support or underwrite their income when the next recession hits, but actually to support their fund or their discretionary spending, right? And, you know, we can speak to different sides of the aisle and what their instincts or predilections might be. But if the populace in this environment, under this current labor-friendly regime that's going to go for many years to come, in our view, demands that we get more than just your support to stay alive or to keep our mortgage paid, folks, they're going to get it, right? Now, that might have one expecting the mildest of recessions, right? And I think it will be a relatively mild one if we have one. But of course, there's this ultimate slash obvious conundrum stemming from what will inflation do under these structural forces that we've now created under such circumstances, right? And that is the conundrum because the Fed sticks to this 2% target, folks. I think they will have to abandon that in the years to come. And we will live with higher inflation and we think a trending lower dollar for years to come. And by the way, folks, that is an investable regime that makes me in no small way bullish on many things after we get through whatever's left in the current cycle. So, um, yeah, I am actually am a bull uh, long term. Not in necessarily where the last bull market gave us the greatest gains, though. And uh, more on that as we go. And clients, of course, we touch on those in our review meetings and so on. So, uh, so yeah, interesting dynamics here. This morning, for example, jobless claims came in at 224,000. Now, that was above the 215 we got last time and above expectations. And what happened? the market rallied on that. As I speak, the NASDAQ 100 is up about half a percent, nothing huge, coming off of a big down day yesterday. And the S&P is up about that much, 0.41%. I will say, folks, that the equal weight index is actually down 15 basis points, so the breadth is not good here this morning. Continuing claims were up like 84,000. So, so folks, again, the market rallied on this news, right? So the problem with the market rallying on weak economic news is, I guess the assumption is this time is different, no recession, this is going to get the Fed to cut interest rates. Okay, I'm on board with that and we would be buying that with both fists except when our recession light is lit. If we have recession, earnings are going to come barreling down and the stock market is going to be coming down as the Fed is cutting interest rates. Now, as I just suggested, though, if they come in with a bunch of fiscal directed right at the consumer, we've got to be on our toes and maybe we don't get that 40 percent drawdown that the numbers would suggest we do. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Maybe the bulls are right. Maybe this will be 1995 all over again and the Fed can manufacture a soft landing. Um, it's just too risky to load up the boat right here, either the market needs to give back and um, see that significant drawdown that you get if we get a recession. Uh, clients, of course, we're hedging along the way so we can mitigate the lion's share of that, but be in a position to buy it. Because I do think the next meaningful dip that is in that bear market category is the one that you're going to want to buy. But again, folks, and of course, clients in particular, we will do this on your behalf. The winners during the next bull market highly likely it won't be the winners of the last bull market. And I'm talking by sector um, and I'm talking by asset class and I'm also talking by regions of the planet.
frankly. So anyway, more on that, of course, over the months and years to come. So, okay, so let's jump to the technicals really quick. I have loaded up here the S&P 500 weekly chart. Just want to point out a couple things. And again, I just feel the need to continue to justify, mostly for you clients, why we continue to be somewhat guarded. And of course, the macro to us is obvious when I show you the economic updates and I talk about the stuff I just talked about. But the technicals, I mean, here's the weekly chart of the S&P. Easier to look at because it's slow moving and easier to draw longer term conclusions on. And here we are once again in a rising wedge pattern at new all time highs without confirmation from the momentum indicators, the moving average convergence divergence or the RSI. But one thing I want to point out is the RSI right here is in overbought territory on the weekly. OK, the last time it was in overbought territory, OK, was right here, right before, you know, that double digit decline from July through October. OK, before that, right, it was right here, right behind, right before like a 27 percent decline in 2022. OK, now weekly overbought signals, you got to be very, very patient with them. Um, because they can last. So here we are just kind of churning around up at these levels. And yeah, you know, we had we had a warning right here, right in late 2021, came out of it, you know, with momentum. But we were, you know, we had a we had, you know, not a good looking pattern there and uh, really rolling over hard on the momentum. And so technically, that's what this chart was pointing to. Right here we are, you know, right before COVID. And, uh, you know, you didn't have the bearish divergence here. You quickly got a sell signal, but you got way overbought. And then, you know, you tried to come back a little bit overbought on the weekly. And you know what happened here? 35 percent on the S&P, like, I don't know, more than that on other averages. Here you are before the 20 percent decline in 2018, which we did not react to. And we were bullish right here because our Macro indicators were all flashing green. Our PWA index was nicely in the green. You know, and we were telling clients, we're just going to wade through this one because this is a correction in the context of an ongoing expansion. And back to the overboughtness, right? In to early 2018, we got hugely overbought. And this was only about a 10% correction in the S&P. But the stage was set. As we came back and got almost overbought again, we had massive divergences before that 20% correction. And we had a little bit overbought. Uh, conditions coming in here in 2014, 10% correction, but then we were continuing to diverge bearishly before this correction. We got close to getting defensive in here. Our, I think our index got down to eight back tested, but now it kept us in the market and we did really good right through here, but we had to live through some volatility. So as technicals help us kind of identify that volatility. The problem we have now, folks, is we have the technicals saying similar things. But we also have the macro looking very concerning to us on the daily chart. Remember uh, my commentary a day or two ago, you know, we were pointing to the, you know, the wedge and so forth. And I said, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see the QRA come in and maybe defeat these patterns. Well, folks, here you got it. This is your sell signal, right? So traders, you break down below that wedge. And man, we did that impulsively and with momentum yesterday. That's your sell signal and you're getting it just about right now. If the white line goes below the red on the MACD, that's a sell signal on the daily chart. Does it make sense that you get a pop today? Absolutely. Technically, it would actually make sense to come all the way back up here and test the bottom of this trend line, right? Before you roll back over, if indeed you're going to, or, you know, if, if this isn't a breakout and it's a failed breakout, then we've got some serious upside ahead of us too. And um, one thing I'll just talk about here is tomorrow's jobs number. Well, tonight you got Apple, Amazon and Meta, right? That could be big in one direction or the other. I could, I could give you the bull and the bear case and they're both legitimate right here. And then tomorrow you've got the jobs numbers. And if the jobs numbers are weak, unless we just get a disaster in earnings overnight, a la Google the other night, the market may very well rally pretty hard. It may overcome anything if we get something ugly in tech earnings tonight. If tech earnings are relatively strong and they get coupled with a weak jobs number, look out above, right? Right now, the technicals are saying that might give us that pop, but ultimately, right, right here and now, the technicals look pretty bearish to me. 
I feel like I'm running long here, so I think we'll just look at the daily on the Qs. Broke down below the wedge. There's your sell signal. We'll see if we come back and test it. Coming back a little bit today. Uh, sell signal on the MACD. Coming off of very overbought levels on the RSI. Yields, remember I said maybe, maybe this would reflect some dovishness on the Fed, but you know, they didn't give us dovishness yesterday. And so maybe the bond market is sniffing out, you know, the potential for recession. I think it probably is. And then here's a sell signal on rates. Now this means bonds are rallying. This is the yield on the 10 year. And then a look at the dollar. It was interesting to me this morning because rates were plummeting. Bonds are rallying, and for a while the dollar was higher, and I think that spoke more about the euro, which is the largest you know, currency offset in the dollar index. But now it's actually down a little bit on the day. And remember I said if yields come down, the dollar's coming down, and that's bullish for stocks, and that's pretty much the playbook so far this morning anyway. And then we already talked about jobless claims. Again, be, beware there. Right now the market will rally on higher jobless claims. Uh, but you can see it's just once they start going up, if you embark on an uptrend, historically that's very bad news for the economy, very bad news for earnings and so forth. But that's redundant here this morning on my part. So, uh, so folks, thank you as always for watching and listening. And clients, again, I'm, I'm talking to you on Thursday. Keep that in mind. So when I say today, you aren't going to get this till Friday unless you log on to the blog. But when I, so when I say today, I'm actually talking about Thursday while you're watching this on Friday. Thanks again. Bye-bye.